Hello everyone! Before I tour you through our virtual museum, let me first introduce our group. So first, of course, I am Jairavi Cristal Pidikiros, the leader of this group. And then my members, John Lawrence De Liva, And our editor, which is Glenderic Oshas. And then Manuelito Perez. And lastly is Mark Francis Gaco. So let's start by answering three questions about historiography or critical race theory. Number one. How might these items have been viewed at that time? These items weren't as significant in the past as they are now, and people didn't particularly value or pay attention to them. However, as time passed, the worth of these historical objects increased. Number two, how should they be viewed today? What is their modern value? After reading the question, I check our museum and after examining the items there, I discover many odd creations made by earlier artists. Many people want to visit the museum to view their paintings since they are so stunning. We should view it as our ancestors did. They valued the modern one more than the old one. But at the current time, there are more stunning paintings by artists and they also deserve to be valued. Number 3. How do your artifacts relate to critical race theory? In our artifacts, one could analyze historical artifacts and documents through a critical race theory lens to gain insights into the ways in which race has shaped societies and institutions. In the case of our artifacts, we have many different artifacts that can show racism that you will see. Welcome to Grind Rush Exhibition, featuring a diverse range of Filipino art and artifacts, from historic items to abstract art, Juan Luna and Fernando Amor solo paintings, and different sculptures and statues. Our exhibit showcases the richness and diversity of Filipino culture. We hope you enjoyed the exhibit and gain a deeper appreciation for Filipino art and heritage. This is our national hero, Jose Protasio Rizal Mercado y Alonso Rialonda, born on June 19, 1861 in Calamba, Philippines, and died on December 30, 1896. This sculpture is Mother and Child in 1950 by Napoleon Veloso Abueva. This piece was carved from one piece of adobe, rendered in cubist form. It shows a female figure in a sitting position admiring her infant while he clings on her head. And this is the MLA work cited page of this sculpture. And let's go to Jan Lawrence Deliva's artifacts. Fernando Amorsolo's work. Fernando Amorsolo Iqueto, born on May 30, 1892 and died on April 24, 1972, was a portraitist and painter of rural Philippines landscapes. Nicknamed the Grand Old Man of Philippine Art. He was the first ever to be recognized as a national artist of the Philippines. Women Bathing by the Stream These standout artworks is from the 1940s, the era described by the art critics as the Golden Period of Fernando Amorsolo, the first national artist. Lot 31 a genre scene depicting maidens by a stream is a prime example of the idealized vision of the Philippine countryside baited in sweetness and light. The Dalagang Bukid was a Marsolo's muse of ideal Filipina beauty. She is illustrated as a smiling and cheerful lady wearing the baratsaya with her hair firmly pulled back by a flowing bandana to protect her from the glare 
of the afternoon sun. Sunday morning going to town. Painted in the midst of the World War II, Sunday morning going to town, a 1942 oil on canvas from the artist's golden period, is a romanticized scene of Filipino rural life. A family sets out together, leaving their hut for a place beyond the viewer's eye. Afternoon Meal of the Rice Workers, 1939 basically captures the traditional farm life of Filipinos featuring the countryside imagery, the combination of colors, lighting, and the inspiring beauty of nature. Behind this painting, the underlying story in it makes it more captivating. And this is the MLA Works cited page of Hernando Amorzola's works. This sculpture is Lualhati by Guillermo Tolendino. Lualhati is a marble representation of the national artist's daughter when she was six years old. Lualhati is among Tolentino's seven children with wife Paz Raimundo. Miss Lualhati Tolentino Rodriguez now resides in Germany. This is the only sculpture of a family member made by the artist that's in the museum collection. And this is the MLA works cited page of this sculpture. So let's go to Mark Francis Gacos artifacts. Doxology by Julie Luch. It is made of terracotta and acrylic. Wait, that's terracotta? It looked like a wood carving. For a moment, I stared at it. The woman's lamentation seemed real. I thought I felt the pain. It is not just a doxology, but an outcry to high heavens. And this is the MLA work cited page of this sculpture. Granadine Arabis Kubay Jose Tanig Joya, 1958. The Granadine Arabisco is a staple of the Philippines artworks created by the well-known Filipino painter and artist Jose Joya. This is an example of horizontal Philippines abstract art on a large scale standing at 305 cm by 118 cm. La Laguna Estigia by Felix Resurrection Hidalgo, 1887. It is generally agreed that Felix Resurrection Hidalgo was one of the most significant painters to emerge from the Philippines in the latter half of the 19th century. The Laguna Estigia, often known as the river sites of just the site, is a Greco-Roman piece inspired by Dante Alighieri, epic form Imperno, written in the 14th century. The Bird Seller in this painting, he has used his original technique known as transparent cubism which involves the layering of different shapes and colors. This layering helps in creating movements and depth and therefore the painting even thought to dimensional seems to have a certain three-dimensional depth along with this the juxtaposition of straight and curved lines rounder, rigid shape and soap and hard color bring life to this famous artwork. Vicente Manansala, 1981, a master of the style of cubism, Vicente Manansala is credited as one of the figures in the Philippine art world who popularized neorealism in the country. He was educated at the University of the Philippines School of Fine Arts, later training in Paris, Banff, Montreal, and at the Otis School of, of Drawing in Los Angeles. 
Manansala developed a style called transparent cubism, where he masterfully overlaid colors and shapes to depict forms and figures. This style is exemplified in his works Calabao, Mother and Child, Madonna of the Slums, and Still Life with Green Guitar. Most of Manansala's artistic estate currently resides in Holy Angel University's The Vicente Manansala Collection. This is the MLA work cited page of these paintings. This sculpture is La Venganza de la Madre or The Mother's Revenge of 1894. La Venganza de la Madre is a terracotta sculpture made by Rizal in 1894 while in exile in the Pitan, Zamboanga. This sculpture depicts a mother dog rescuing her helpless puppy from the attack of a crocodile. It is an allegorical representation of Filipino patriots or mother dog saving the defenseless countryman or the pup from the exploitation of Spanish power, which is the crocodile. This masterpiece by Rizal was declared a national treasure in 2008. So let's go to Manuelito Perez articles. Juan Luna is considered one of the greatest painters in Philippine history. His achievements as a classical painter in the 1880s quickly elevated him to the top circles of European art and for the first time brought respect to Filipino artists. The Spolarium is one Luna's most enormous artwork in the Philippines. This monumental work of art won the gold medal during the 1884 Madrid Exposition of Fine Arts, which depicts dying gladiators. The Tampuan is a classic oil on canvas painting, painted by Juan Luna in 1895. It depicts a Filipino man and a Philippine woman having a lover's quarrel. The woman from Bulacan is one of Luna's paintings. He did when he returned to the Philippines in 1894. Luna's expertise and excellence in the traditional style are manifested in this painting with her lifelike rendition of the details of the Bulacanya Spina. The Parisian Life is an oil-on-canvas impressionist painting made by Juan Luna in 1892. This painting captures Dr. Jose Rizal, Dr. Ariston Bautista, and Juan Luna sitting and having a relaxed time in cafe in Paris, France. And this is the MLA works cited page of Juan Luna's works. Let's go at Glenderick Osha's artifacts. The Iris Sacri Lovers figurine is a sculpture that was created over 11,000 years ago and is the oldest known representation of two people engaged in a loving embrace. It was found in one of the eight Sacri caves near Bethlehem. The sculpture was made by carving a single rock of calcite cobble, which was picked away with a stone point to create the heads, arms, and leg positions of the couple. The sculpture shows the lovers face to face. The arms of, the, of one of the couples are positioned around the shoulders of the other. The masusopats for breast spots are ceramic objects, the origin and cultural significance of which are still unknown. 
The complete lack of data was the result of looting and destructions of archaeological sites. Two variations of the Masusupat can be viewed at the National Museum, one with four breasts and another one with breasts facing seven directions. The Kinari was excavated in Surigawa at around 1981. It is a gold artifact that symbolizes the feminine beauty for it is a half woman, half bird, and a religious significance for it encapsulates grace and accomplishment. The Venus of Brasempuy is an ivory pegorine created about 25,000 years ago and is one of the earliest known realistic representations of a female human face. She was carved from mammoth ivory and her face is triangular and serene. The forehead, nose, and brows are carved in a relief but, this, but the mouth is absent suggesting the work of the sculptor may have been interrupted. The represent, representation of her is a checkerboard like pattern formed by two series of shallow incisions at night, at night at right angles to each other. This checkerboard like feature has also been has also been interpreted as a hood with geometric decoration. So this is the MLA works cited page of these artifacts.